Today I'm going to be talking about rough bark elms. Elms can have a smooth bark or a very quirky bark like some of these elms. This one is a Yatsubusa elm. Yatsubusa means dwarf. Uh, and here we have a Hokkaido elm parent tree and then an air layer off another parent tree and then also a cutting off of the other parent tree as well. Uh, I'll show you a little bit about what the quirky bark looks like, some of the growth habits I've observed on the trees, and also some plans for a couple of them, especially this one. Let's take a look. This particular Yatsubusa elm has some very quirky bark down here at the base. It used to have a top where this now dead stem is, and this top I believe probably came up uh, somewhere out of shot somewhere up there. It was pretty big. Um, at some point it had died back before I bought it. Um, I actually got it at a, a pretty good discount because the older top was not there. Um, cool thing about it is I'm planning on shorten the, shortening this one down quite a bit anyways to really highlight all of this lower section. What that's going to do for me is I can take an air layer up here at this point and have a whole new tree from the top section and then I can uh, develop these two lower branches as the main parts of the trunk. Uh, it's not super flexy, so we'll see how any sort of bending goes. But I imagine as soon as I have this upper section uh, removed, that'll drive the growth quite a bit further down from here. Now, speaking of where these grow from, the quirky part of the bark here can develop some new growth. I'm actually pointing at a nub right here uh, where some growth was coming out of, and that came out of the quirky section. It can happen from the cork, but where it most likely happens will be some of the smoother sections such as this branch right here. This is smooth, hasn't developed much cork yet, uh, much rough bark I mean, and this is where the profusion of buds and new growth comes from that's typical for a small leafed elm like this. This is not the smallest of leaved elms, but they do tend to have uh, very tight growth when given uh, the right type of pruning. Let me show you up here at the top what I mean by that. Up here at the top of this section you can see how tight that growth is. This has been pruned, some of the thick parts at least have been pruned a little bit. Um, this one right here used to come out another foot or something like that. And so I've, I've brought this back down and just by chopping these three or four main uh, leaders, this just exploded with growth, which is pretty cool. You can make a really neat canopy out of all of this pretty quickly. So you'll notice that there's another type of growth here. It's not smooth particularly, and it's not quirky just yet. This is kind of an in-between growth where it's starting to develop the texture that these uh, Yatsubusa elms are known for. Uh, it's starting to, you can see, kind of crack and develop these little squares and odd shapes of, of bark texture here. So this section will also, uh, especially at these older branch areas, uh, will develop a whole lot more buds as it pops out in spring and throughout the summer. Um, not nearly as fast as the smooth parts do, but a little bit faster than the quirky parts do. Another thing to note about this type of tree is that as it develops that bark, the bark becomes very thick. So this thickness that it is right now may not grow as fast as the bark grows. The bark here at the base is very thick. Uh, where this dead trunk is, um, I imagine the bark came out nearly double in thickness of what that trunk is now. Um, so yeah, really interesting how they how they grow like that. Here's a little bit more of a close-up of the texture on this uh, trunk here. You can see it's got some swirls going. Uh, there's a couple of stubs that have been cut, and it's it's dark, kind of black. Um, some of that is just the, um, the normal decay. Some of it is more like a black algae that's going on. Uh, in any case, it's going to be getting some carving here in the spring. So this will be a fun one to, to work on for sure. There's a little more detail of the different bark characteristics. We have the corky bark leading to more of a smooth bark as it goes up, up into the branches. Now we have this little Hokkaido elm 
And Hokkaido is a very small leaf down. These, these leaves are just really, really tiny. And it does produce um, very, very tight growth. Uh, it's a slow, slow growing tree. It, uh, it's really more of a shrub more than anything because it just doesn't get tall enough to become a tree. One of the reasons why is because even though it grows dense, when it does elongate, that thick bark really is very deceiving. It looks super thick, but inside it just doesn't have a lot of support, and they, they do tend to break off. So this was a one of a pair that I had gotten uh, from a nursery over the summer. And I found uh, pretty quickly that uh, they're, they're just not that durable. I was uh, trying to clean up one of them that had the, the long branches and just kind of um, what I'm doing now where I'm going in and um, taking off some of the dead stuff. I guess I moved it just a little bit too much and that one broke off right at the base. So I was able to get um, an air layering off of one of those, which I'll show you in a minute, and then the other one it, it uh, I tried cuttings and it was too late. It it uh, it uh, the cuttings did not take. So the Hokkaido elm also gets some of that rough corky bark here at the base. It develops the, a similar but miniaturized version of that Yatsubusa bark. So here you'll get an idea of what that bark looks like. Uh, very similar to the other bark, but compared to the size of my hand, the uh, squares and other um, sizes of the, the chunks on that Yatsubusa are about the size of a fingertip, whereas on here, well, it's, it's very miniaturized. It's smaller than a pinky nail, <clears throat> but still quite rough. You can see in here there's some craggy sort of barks. Uh, it really holds on to moss and lichen really well. Uh, and then that travels up the trunk pretty quickly. This seems to, um, it seems to look old a little faster, I think. And I say that mainly because it has, um, it has a lot more, uh, little twigs that come out from here and, and leave little scars as, as they die off or are ripped off. So it, it does develop that, um, uh, thick bark pretty quickly. And here's some of these itty bitty tiny leaves they are so small that if I were to put my tweezers up to it you can see how small these little guys are. Let's see if I can actually get one very easily. This is the tip of a tweezer and they're itty bitty leaves. Kind of a fun one though. You don't see them very often in this this size. This is uh, kind of a rare find. These started out uh, nearly 20 inches tall. And now they're just over, just over 14 inches, maybe tall right now. Um, this one is at least. The other one that I air layered off of, it really doesn't have much left. This is the air layer off of the top of uh, the other buddy from that little Hokkaido elm, and this one rooted really well. <clears throat> I think I had the uh, the pot with the air layer on it for about two months, and when I took it off. That pot was completely dense, full of roots. So uh, these elms, they really, really root well. They're known for uh, taking well from both air layerings and from cuttings. And this one, you can see how quickly the leaves have turned compared to the other ones. Um, sometimes that's really seen as a an indicator that the roots are doing what they're supposed to be doing. Fall leaf activity that's a normal color like this shows that the tree is uh, healthy enough to um, perform its normal yearly shed. Send all of the nutrients back down to the roots and make a little bit of extra uh, trunk thickness as it goes also. So that's the air layer, definitely doable. And then cuttings are also definitely doable. This was a cutting off of the one that had the broken top. Uh, this was one of three that actually survived. Uh, the other two, for whatever reason, just uh, didn't produce enough roots. So this one, uh, this one has quite a bit of the stem underneath the soil there. I wanted to ensure that it has plenty of roots for when I um, go and try to check it out in the spring and uh, just uh, start developing it as bonsai. It'll most likely be allowed to grow pretty freely for a couple of years until it develops an interesting nabari. So. Definitely uh, a candidate, any type of elm um, seems to be a good candidate for cuttings. So that's the rough bark elm. 
There's uh, more varieties, I'm sure, that develop some rough bark, but two of the notable ones are the uh, Yatsubusa dwarf elm and the Hokkaido super dwarf elm with those tiny leaves. And this is a very messy time of year for them as they drop their profusion of leaves down onto the ground, or if you have them in a bonsai pot, all over your nice bonsai pot. It's like sprinkling salt or pepper, oregano. Hope you enjoyed the video. This is just one of the many plants that I work with. <clears throat> I have uh, one other type of elm that I work with called uh, Jacqueline Helier elm. Has a little bit different growth pattern, not as rough of bark, but still elms are great. Uh, closely related is actually hornbeams, such as a Korean hornbeam, which I also work with. Uh, Japanese maples are by far my favorite, and you notice all of these are also deciduous trees, which as a group I work with far more than evergreen trees. But I will show some evergreen trees in the future as well, especially uh, come next year when they start to actually do something and, and grow in the spring. That's it for now. Thank you very much for watching.